Right. Okay, we'll do the power down switch position checks first, and then we'll start the APU. APU started. We'll do all the panels, the power up switch and system checks. First panel, second panel, third panel we leave alone. Fourth panel we'll do. Come to the middle. Compass card checked. Go across, down. Oxygen checked. Come across. Vertically down. Check it. Everything's been done, or um, the system has been checked. You wait for the captain signal. Captain gives a signal. Then you put the electric hydraulic pumps on. Go through the third panel. Come down again. Put the electric hydraulic pumps off. Make sure they're off. We'll have the data then from tower. Start filling in the tilt card. Captain gets on board. Gets the final figures. Fills in the weight and balance. Gives us weight and balance. We're filling the last details. On the tilt card, we'll put the tilt card down over here. Then the captain will say, you ready for the briefings? This is depending on the SOP. So if you're ready for briefings, yes, I'm ready for briefings. We'll do the engine parameter briefing. Threat and error would have been done in the um, briefing room already. We'll do the engine parameters, smoke and fire evacuation briefing. Below 18 knots, what we'll stop for. 18 knots to V1, what we'll stop for. And we'll take a tilt card, whoever's going to be the pilot flying. Take a tilt card up, brief the tilt card. Check at altitudes, speed set, uh, altitude with the Q and H that's been set there, speed set, make sure the instruments are um, the same, confirming. Then the pilot flying will then continue the takeoff take data card briefing with the engine failure briefing, and, dis and discuss the engine failure briefing and any special procedures on top of that. Briefing card, the tilt card will then be put uh, in the low speed alarm box, or on top here it will be clamped. So the card is there, indicating that the tilt card has been completed and briefed. Then um, the pilot flying, or the captain will then ask for the before start checklist. Before start checklist completed, wait for the last passengers to board. Once all the passengers are on board, uh, you can get us, uh, the captain will say you can get us a start. First officer will get start. Once start is gotten, then the captain will say you can close the door to the aerostase. Aerostase closes the door. Before the door is closed, Either put both packs off or open under the window so we don't get the bump in the cabin as we close because then it's going to in increase the pressure inside the cabin. Close the door and then once the door is closed and the packs are off, close the window and then the captain will say go ahead with your clear for start actions. First officer will go through his actions, captain will go through his actions, captain will say read the clear for start checklist. First officer reads it, captain replies. First officer checks that the captain is reading the replying the correct stuff and then once it's completed, clear for start check is completed. Captain will then say, start engine number two if we're on the APU. Start engine number two, first officer looks out to the right, will say, number two is clear, capped and feathered. Captain will then say, start number two. First officer will pull the starter switch, hopefully seeing ignition light and call. Ignition light on, starting the stopwatch, one eye outside, one eye inside. Captain now waits for 18% on the NH. Once he sees 18%, he puts fuel in, puts his finger on the guard and keep it in. So if you have to cut it, you can quickly cut it. So you don't get stuck where you can't cut it. Okay, so fuel going in, finger on the guard, keeping it there. Um, uh, once you've got 18%, you're going to put in the fuel. With, we must see fuel flow within 10 seconds of putting the fuel in. Within 10 seconds of seeing fuel flow, we must see light up. Within 25 seconds of this whole process taking place, um, we must see, or 25% in H, we must see that the ignition light goes on. In temperature pressure is increasing, increasing, increasing. You get to two spikes, you're going to get single spike, then drop a little bit, then second spike as a fourth, that's a second group of four injectors, the last group of four injectors goes on. As a NH goes to 60%, minimum RPM. Check it, everything stabilizes engine wise. Captain will come up, do his flows. Hopefully at 50% the ignition light was off, I forgot about that. Hopefully at 50% the ignition light goes off, if not at 50%, the captain will wait to 56%. If at 56%, no ignition light off call, he will abort the start. Okay, so the start's now completed. Captain will go to the left, you will see, say, um, number one is clear, captain feathered, start number one. You will follow the same procedure. After the engine starts, you will be in this position, minimum RPM. The captain would have done his flows, and the captain would have looked at the two dials and said to the first officer, go ahead with your after-start actions. First officer is going to start, of course, at um, electric hydraulics, sees the spikes, 
Captain does his flows, first officer does his flows. On completion of all the flows, the first officer will press the go around buttons to indicate to the captain that the flows have been completed. The captain will then say, go ahead with the after start checklist. The first officer will then read the after start checklist. Once it's completed, the captain will say to the first officer, have a look, call tower and ask them for taxi. Once taxi is gotten, we'll then start the taxi by looking out clear left, clear right, starting to move, brake check, and then we'll do either we've done control checks according to whichever SOP, control checks before we get the taxi as part of the after start checklist, or on some of the other checklists or uh, SOPs, we'll do the BCIRF now during the taxi. Okay, so as we taxi, the captain will then ask the first officer, read the before take of checklist, on the Sahara one it's just before take of checklist, on the other one it's going to be before take of checklist to the first line. We read the checklist, taxi, 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 get it after departure clearance, get to the holding point. At the holding point uh, they tell us to enter the runway, we look out, approach area clear, runway clear, taxi onto the runway, first officer does his flow, so the captain will say go ahead with your runway entry flows. First officer does it, go ahead with the runway entry checklist, that's the Sahara, the Griffin SOP. First officer takes out the checklist, reads the runway into checklist. It's not the same with the Sahara one, it's, it's different with Sahara. Then you line up, take off clearance gotten, light signals and uh, park breaker would, would have been put off. The captain will then say, condition was max RPM, read the clear for take off checklist. That's the Sahara one, of the, um, the Griffin one, and the first officer will read the clear for take off checklist. If it's Sahara's one, you'll go max RPM multiple arm metal clearing considered and taxi light a uh, takeoff um, landing lights on then if it's the captain's takeoff the captain's hands will be on the power levers the captain will just raise the levers check it the NPs govern once they govern at 100 percent he will abruptly advance the power levers and say set up say take it say takeoff power lifting his, his or her hand first officer will then set the takeoff power according to the torque settings once it's set will say take a power set first officer removes the hands Captain pilot flying now puts his hands on the on the power levers, continues going. 80 knots, there will be a call. 80 knots from pilot monitoring, pilot flying says checks. Um, and then at V1, the pilot monitoring will call V1, pilot flying will say checks, and then puts his hands off. On some of the SOPs, it doesn't say, EOC doesn't say checks, just remove their hands at the V1 call. Um, if it's the first officer's takeoff as a pilot flying, the first officer will do similar, will advance the power levers, It'll be in the sweet spot, of course. Advance the power levers, see hundred percent. Then just as, just abruptly advance the power levers. They set take off power, take the hands off, and then the captain will take control and set the power and keep his or her hand on the power until the V1 call. At V1, hands off the of the power levers. At uh, rotate, the call from a pilot monitoring is rotate. Pilot flying will pitch back, uh, pitch the nose up towards the canopy and start climbing out hunting V2 to so go for V2 and continue flying at V2 at positive climb, pilot monitoring says positive climb, pilot flying says gear up, pilot monitoring raises the gear climb to 400 foot Griffin SOP is going to be heading alt select climb at 400 foot the Sahara one I think is only heading alt select then uh, we'll accelerate to V2 plus 20 for Sahara at V2 plus 20 Pilot flying will say, pilot monitoring will say V2 plus 20, pilot flying will say flaps up. Pilot monitoring will raise the flaps once the flaps are up. Pilot monitoring will say flap zero and set the climb power. Then the pilot monitoring will say flap zero, climb power set your levers. Um, the pilot flying will then take over the power levers, say my levers, and then continue the flying. If it's um, the Griffin at 400 foot, the call is going to be 400 foot heading alt select climb. Accelerate to VFS, at VFS the pilot monitoring will say VFS, pilot flying will say flaps up, pilot monitoring will raise the flap, once the flaps at zero will say flaps up, set the power, uh, flaps up, the pilot flying will then say um, set takeoff power, pilot monitoring will set the takeoff or the climb power, uh, pilot monitoring will set the climb power, pilot flying will say, uh, pilot monitoring will set the climb power and say climb power set your levers, pilot flying will put his hands on and say uh, climb power set my levers. We continue climb. As soon as practicable at that point, the pilot monitoring will then go put the prop sync correction, put the auto feather off, put the prop sync on. And then whenever approach ap appropriate, read the after takeoff checklist. It's gonna be a silent checklist or a quiet checklist. Don't read it out loud once it's completed. After takeoff check is completed, take a toll card, cross it out, put it down in the middle here, squeeze the box. Continue.
continue climb to um, transition altitude, pilot monitoring will say transitions, pilot flying will say set 1013, setting 1013, pilot monitoring sets 1013, pilot flying says climbing through 7500 foot now, pilot monitoring will say checks or 10 high or 50 low or whatever the discrepancy might be. Continue climbing to level 100. Pilot monitoring under 100 says 100. Pilot flying says land lights off, land lights off, pack lights off, and configure the bleeds. Pilot flying or pilot monitoring will then configure the bleeds. If, and this is the way it would have been, the pack should be on the normal, on the low position at this stage. APU bleed will be on. Just put that on. APU bleed will be on. Cross bleed will be open. Engine bleeds will both be closed. AP will feed pack one and then through the cross bleed feed pack two. Now we're going to switch it. So we're going to put the cross bleed off. So pack one is being fed by the APU. Pack two has now got no feed. Put bleed two into the low position. Pack two is now fed by bleed two. Cross bleed's closed. Pack one is fed by the by the APU. So you can close the APU bleed. Put bleed one on. Now bleed one is feeding pack one. Cross bleed's closed. Pack two is being fed by bleed two. The uh, APU bleed is off. Continue climb to 12,000 foot. At 12,000 foot to level 120, pilot monitoring says level 120. Pilot flying says checks. Um, you can shut down the APU and set condition levers 90%. So then the pilot flying or the pilot monitoring will then go put the prop sync switch off. The pilot flying in the meantime would have reduced the power to 69%. Pilot monitoring now brings the condition levers back until 84% torque or at 90% uh, RPM and then put the prop sync back on again and then when that completed we'll press the shutdown button for the APU APU spools off uh, the generator can go off we wait for 20% at 20% APU off continue climb then to level of altitude once we've leveled off either at 180 knots or speed stable depending on your high or low if you're low it's going to be 180 knots if you're high it's going to be speed stable the call is 180 knots or speed stable pilot flying then says set condition was 85 percent pilot monitoring goes pop sync off 85 percent set there might be a slight power lever adjustment just slight 85 percent 85 percent set continue flying at the appropriate time pilot monitoring will get the ATIS and data from the um, landing field then take a tilt card, fill in the data in the tilt card, put the tilt card down that side in the middle. Once a pilot flying is ready for the tilt card, he or she will say, let's brief the tilt card. You will then take a tilt card, brief the speeds, brief everything that needs to be done, set the speeds, brief the go-around procedure, I IFR or VFR. If it's an IFR procedure, we'll brief it off the plate. If it's VFR, we'll just write VFR and we'll do a VFR landing. Once that's briefed, the tilt card is briefed, you put the tilt card back into the low-speed isolon, then we get the descent once the descent has been gotten. Pilot flying will say the pilot or the pilot monitoring will say we've got descent. Once you've got the descent, the pilot flying will then set the altitude for the precisation and say to the pilot monitoring, uh, you can go ahead to the descent and approach checklist. Pilot monitoring then reads the descent and approach checklist on completion. Pilot flying, I suggest take your damper off and like this, bring the power back while trimming. And then we initiate the descent. You can do a 45% power descent, no problem. Then we'll do the descent. As we initiate the descent, we'll press the uh, your damper switch again. Continue the descent, continue the descent at level 100. Pilot monitoring will say 100. Pilot flying will say landing lights on, pack lights on, start the APU. Pilot monitoring, start the APU. Once the APU started, put the APU generator switch on. We'll check that the APU has taken power. Yes, it has. Continue down, continue down at the transition level um, point. The pilot monitoring will say transition level. Pilot flying will say configure the APU bleeds and set 1013. It will set 1013. We cross check it again like before. Um, descending through 6,000 foot now. Checks 10 high or 50 low, however it might be. Then we'll go. Remember now the engine bleeds are on. Cross bleed is closed. So we can put the engine bleed number one off. Pack one is now powered by nothing. Pack two is powered by engine bleed two. Put the APU bleed on, which will now power pack one. Put uh, bleed two off. So pack two is now unpowered. Pack one is powered by the APU. 
Now pack 2 is being powered by the APU and pack 1 is also powered by the APU through the or pack 2 by through the um, cross bleed. Okay, we'll read the checklist. Pilot flying, um, we'll say read the decent or read the transition checklist, transition checklist read, continue down, continue down at the appropriate place. We'll select gear down. Pilot flying will say gear down. If the pilot monitoring sees the speed is high, pilot monitoring will say check speed or standing by speed. We'll get the speed correct. Once the speed is correct, pilot monitoring will select gear down and say three green, six greens. Pilot flying will say checks. Continue, continue, continue. Flap 15 will be the call from a pilot flying. Pilot monitoring will select flap 15. We'll decrease the speed, decrease altitude, um, fly close to the field. Then at the appropriate time, the pilot, pilot flying will say max RPM. Pilot monitoring then puts the prop sync off, sets max RPM slowly, put the, prop, uh, put the auto feather on. Continue, continue, continue. At the appropriate place, pilot flying will say flaps 25. Pilot monitoring will select the flap to 25 and we'll establish ourselves in the final approach and then the pilot flying um, will say go ahead with the landing checklist. Pilot monitoring will read the landing checklist. Go, flare, land, touchdown, at touchdown. Something that I do suggest that you should do, which is not in any of the SOPs, is you must see the two beta lights. Because if you don't, if you put the reverse and you only have one beta light, it means that only the one low pitch stop has been made. It means only the one prop will go into reverse. And if that will be an asymmetric uh, thrust problem. So we ideally want to go into beta, two beta lights, and then only reverse, preferably. Though that doesn't say it in the SOP, but that's a correct way, to, better way to do it, safer way. All right. So at 60 knots or 40 knots, depending on contaminated or non-contaminated, the pilot monitoring will say, it's a, also pilot flying, if it's a pilot monitoring, pilot monitoring will say 60 knots, I will say out of reverse, so I'll just bring the levers out of reverse, and I'll say minimums. Pilot monitoring will set minimum RPM. Go, it takes you off, as it takes you off, pilot monitoring, go ahead with your after landing checks or after landing flows. Or do or use your after landing flows once it's completed. Captain also do his or her after landing flows, taxi, 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 get to the uh, bay. Once about 90 degrees to the bay with the marshmallow, ma marshmallow in sight, the pilot uh, monitoring will say marshmallow in sight, the pilot flying will say checks, I've got him or her, put the taxi light off. So taxi light is off, we taxi in. As we stop in the bay, park brake is then set, condition levers goes to feather. Now I think in um, Sahara SOP, it uh, doesn't go to feather, we wait for it. For, for one minute, then only in feather. Um, observe the timing as per the SOP. Otherwise, the minimum from Embraer is 45 seconds after the last time power was taken, then only we're allowed to shut down. But that's going to be more than enough time. So then, pilot flying says, uh, does these flows, pilot monitoring does these flows, um, and then the captain will say, go ahead with the transit shutdown checklist. First officer then reads the transit shutdown checklist, reading and keeping his or her thumb there, and every time checking that the captain is doing it. And once it's completed, then the last item on it will be to shut the engines down. So we can shut the engines down. And um, then we'll fill in the paperwork and open the doors, let the clients get out with the APU running. If we have to do a final shutdown, then AP, the passengers are off. We're going to do a final shutdown. We'll first start at the APU bleed to give it time. So we'll put the APU bleed off. Then we'll come to the back of the center console. We put the pedestal light off. Make sure that controls are in the sweet spot. Pop brake is of course set. Um, I can, for me, I've got short legs, so I can put the control lock now in already. Control lock is in. Come up, put the radio masters off. Come on off. Cage the standby horizon. Backup battery off. Go across. Make sure all the lights are off. All the eyebrow lights. All looks good. Come up. Put the. Um, Recirculation fans and the gasper fan off, close the, the cross bleed packs are off. Peter statics would have been off as well. That's from the after landings, then the auto feather would have been off. Then after minute observed, we're gonna shut down the APU, press the button as the APU starts shutting down, generator off, pump off, front uh, number two front pump, wait for twenty percent at twenty percent, APU master switch off, emergency lights off, battery off. And that's it.